this is the fourth attempt. The first one was a fail. The second, uh, but the rest have been quite successful. This one had slightly more water content. And it's drying slightly differently than the others. I've been more patient with this one. Pressed it last night, as opposed to force drying it like I did with the others. It looks like a good separation so far. Should just be able to. Pull that off like, oh no! Disaster. What do I do about that? How did that happen? Still very soft. Lots of inclusions in this one. Hmm. I have much to learn. Well, do you know what I'm going to do with this one? to cut a hole in it. And to do this because this can be the first attempt at the cupola crucible. purpose of that melt iron in there with the coil above the hole plug the hole with some wet clay on the end of a carbon stick until that whole thing is full of iron and maybe another one on top of it ideally and then I can tap it off like you do with a cupola. And maybe even add some limestone. I'm gently drying crucibles two, three and four. Number three is my favorite. These two were very dry mix and I think that works better. That one, although it seemed like it was easier whilst I was ramming it, has come out not very good. So this was the first one. As soon as it came out of the mould, I saw that crack. It didn't have any lengthy drying time at all. I used a blowtorch on the aluminium mould whilst it was still in there after I'd taken the core, the, the plug out that forms the inside. That dried it out a bit and then I put it in the induction coil uh, with a lump of iron in it and that did it a bit more. And then I left the iron in there and it melted and you can see it's cooked quite nicely on the inside um, 
I'm not sure what those colours mean. It's pretty solid. I'm quite encouraged. I've had that half back in and melted the remnants. So that particular piece has been in contact with molten iron twice and it's still intact. This half, uh, <laughs> funny, you know, half solid, half molten. Um, being able to cast refractory iron-proof cylinders has some interest. The fact that your charge is always of a much greater volume than your melt. Fill it up, you melt, it drops, you put more in, it melt, drops, more in, melt, drops. If I can cast refractory cylinders, then that can be melting and you can just place one or two more cylinders on top, open at both ends, fill that up with the charge then any rising heat is preheating that charge maybe it's possible to collect a whole crucible of molten iron in a single charge of solid iron which is less visits to the machine for more efficiency easier production and more fun ah. i am not dissatisfied with this at all despite its obvious destruction I've done something slightly differently again this time. I didn't have a full quantity of mix. Hammered the bottom down thoroughly to try and avoid the error of the last one. I used a smaller plug to form an immediate circle, packed it down a bit. Then I used the correct plug to form the final circle, the final inner. I just used this lump of steel to go around the inside which has thinned the walls which is good I want to try thinner walls because that means the charge is closer to the coil and also it's made it a bit higher let's see if it comes out of the mold It's not wanting to separate, so I'm going to give it some hits.
demolded, steaming nicely. 